Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'm going to teach you how to create better ray traced weapons or whatever you want to use it for, I guess, for CubeJS. <laughs> if you just try to use the normal CubeJS method, as I mentioned in the other video, as you can see, it'll only work if you're aiming at entities. It doesn't work anywhere else. However, with this method here, you can shoot anywhere, you can shoot in the air, on blocks, um, and I'll even teach you how you can, like, get past entity iframes. However, it's not permanent. It only works when you shoot them with a the gun. If you wanted to make it permanent, you could do that in the mob spawns. Anyways, let's get started. So, as I mentioned in my other video, I'm going to be putting this inside of item events. However, I would suggest that you put this inside of, like, a use event inside of items, or... Sorry, I was thinking of items. Or just, like, put it inside of an object or something, which I might make a tutorial of soon. It's just the more performant way of doing it. However, if you're just prototyping, or in this case, doing a tutorial, then it should be fine. Almost done here. Basically what we're saying is that when we right click a stick, we're gonna grab the player from the event. And if our hand in the event does not equal your main hand, then it will return. And return with nothing just stops the script, basically. Just for people that don't know. First of all, I'm gonna start by doing a player.pick. Now, this is pretty much what is driving the entire process of being able to shoot blocks as well. And then here, this is your normal ray trace method. Oops, 16. Honestly, I would suggest just setting a variable up here. Just so you can change it easily. After that, we're going to do something similar to our last video and make an object of P angle, which is going to be player angle. And we're going to want the X, the Y, and the Z. So we're going to do player.lookangle.x. Don't forget the parentheses. <laughs> I made that mistake a bunch. So we're going to get the look angle of Y. Oops. And then we're going to get the look angle of Z, just like that. This is how your script should look. You should have a pick for your distance. I forgot what this number is. And this is ignore liquids. This is what this Boolean is here. So you have your pick, you have your ray trace, and you have your player angles. Next. We're going to check to see if there's an entity, do this, or else do that. We're just going to create a for loop here. And if I... Oops. If I is... Um less than ray.entity.distance to entity layer just like that basically what we're saying here is that if i is less than the ray trace entity's distance to the player then we're gonna do this here we're just gonna put player.level dot spawn particles and I'm just gonna make this grid 
don't override the limiter at ray.entity.x ray or wait no sorry you want to get the player x plus i times pangle.x so what i'm gonna do here is i'm just gonna copy and paste these and just change them up a bit So there you go. We have it for X, Y, and Z. We're taking the player X and then adding the uh, for loop I multiplied by your player look angle. And over here, where it's your Y is, you just want to do plus player dot get I height. Just so that it'll like go in the middle of the screen. So over here, I'm just going to copy-paste this and change it up a bit. We're going to delete this, and we're going to say pick dot distance to player. And then we're going to make it smoke. And I'm pretty sure that should work already. Oh. No, not working. So I'm a dummy. I've done this before. There's more things you have to add in after you get the player. I'm sorry. But yeah. We're going to put zero for all of the velocities, a one for the count, and zero for the speed. Yeah, there you go. As you can see, it's working already. And then when you aim at entities, it does crit. Pick can be pretty inaccurate sometimes. What I like to do is just add minus six to it over here. So yeah, if you go over here, I just like to go here and put minus it. <laughs> now it should be way more accurate. It can still mess up sometimes, especially if you aim at the corner of blocks, but it should be pretty usable overall still. <laughs> now to have it attack the entity, you just come over here and you do array.entity.attack. Then we're going to do player.damage sources with parentheses and we're just going to do generic for now. And then to make it ignore hit markers, you can come over here and do array.entity dot invulnerable time five or whatever you want to make it. Yeah, so now it should be doing damage through iframes. If you wanted to add sounds and more particle effects and whatnot, I would recommend watching my last video about ballistic projectiles, and that will teach you how to do a couple other things that might help with this. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Uh -huh.